Issa Talk is a Filipino podcast based here in Cebu City by your host, Issa Please. This podcast focuses on pop culture, growing up as a millennial, a woman, a creative, a creator, a business owner, and everything in between. I hope you like this podcast enough to subscribe and to add us to your playlist. Here's the episode. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Issa Please, and welcome back to another episode of Issa Talk, the podcast where... You know, I think I should definitely start to consider a clear description of what this podcast is because seeing anything and everything, honestly, is pretty damn generic and I'm personally getting kind of sick of it. (laughs) Um, First of all, I wanted to say a happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, including mine. If you're listening to this, Mom, happy Mother's Day. I know we haven't spoken to each other in three months but I love you and hopefully one day we're going to start talking again and we're going to put all this behind us, but not without self growth. Okay. Okay. That's kind of (laughs) weird. Um, yeah, I think I guess, um, yeah. So my mom and I have not spoken in like three months and it's okay. Sometimes you don't talk to your parents. If you're like dysfunctional like we are, <laughs> this isn't the first time, but um, I definitely think that there is a lot of going on both our parts, and it's it's not it's not something we're ever going to talk about on the podcast. Um, I'm going to respect her privacy and my privacy as well, but I'm just putting it out there. Um, I also really want to say Happy Mother's Day to all. I think this is important for me to say also because. A lot of these people do kind of just get forgotten and it's a very sensitive time for a lot of women. But happy, happy Mother's Day as well to all the mothers who have lost. Um, I do know a lot of people who have been unsuccessful in conceiving, but you guys are still mothers. Um, Happy Mother's Day to all the fur moms out there, myself included. I kind of felt bummed today. Aside from the fact that I'm not talking to my mom about the fact that I'm not a mom yet, <laughs> because um, it's it's kind of days like these guys where like you kind of get it a lot. The, oh, happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, wait, you're not a mom. Sorry. And it's like it kind of does. It does hurt, especially if you want to be a mom. Um, just like for everyone, because I do get it a lot. They're like, oh, my God, what are you waiting for? I'm waiting for money, bitch. <laughs> But, I mean, I can laugh about it now, but it still hurts the same way. Like, I want to be a mom one day, but I think financially and mentally, I'm not there. I'm pretty damn selfish. Um, There's a lot of things about me that I know are not ready to be a mother yet. But I do, I do want to. Don't get it twisted and stop asking me when I'm going to be a mom. Because the answer is, if I could, if I had the mental space to be a mother right now, I would have been one. But also, happy Mother's Day to all the women out there who are going through some kind of thing, you know? And, like, especially to the moms out, like, to the women out there who chose not to be mothers because, like, they know that or, like, they feel like it's not for them for unselfish reasons, like, because they know that they can't provide for them and stuff like that. Like, it's hard, you know? I'm trying to... I'm stopping because there's so many damn ants around this fucking house i don't know if it's if it i don't know if it's like the virus or the fact that there's like literally no garbage anywhere or leftovers for ants but our house has been infested with ants lately and i'm freaking out because like they're crawling up on my arms or in my underwear like i don't even know what the fuck is up like is there just like nothing for the ants outside anymore that they feel the need to come inside my house and i kind of feel bad for them like i've thought about feeding them once yeah that's weird i don't want this episode to be like a whole mother's day feel sappy no because it's a day of celebration so if you're a mother out there i hope that you're listening to this podcast the day after and you're just like I was too busy on Sunday being pampered and feeling like my mother, feeling like the mother that I am, that I could not just bring myself to listen to the podcast. So, yeah, that's it. Anyways, um, so how was your guys' week? How is everything? I hope that it's getting better. We have recently allowed food from the outside into our homes, given that we have 
quarantined them pretty well. And I don't know if I said this last week or if it happened this week. I kind of don't remember the days anymore, but I ate a cookie sometime this or last week that I did not quarantine. So I'm going to have to be quarantined a little bit longer. I think I said it last week, but um, this week has pretty much flown by for me. I've been feeling a lot of things this week. I think that I have like perpetually pissed off syndrome because I just tweeted that and I meant it because I've just been feeling a lot of things this week. Um, but feelings aside, I always feel things. I'm a Scorpio and I'm like a fire Scorpio, if that makes any sense. I'm like super passionate, super emotional. You're going to get all those things from me. And annoyance is the number one feeling that I have. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But this week kind of flew by for me. I had... It's pretty interesting because ever since I posted last week's podcast, I think it was like law of attraction or something, but I was getting more inquiries for um, content, which I'm pretty happy about. But um, just an update on that, like it's definitely true. So if you're a podcaster and you're listening to this, a lot of the companies are really like scrimping down on their budget and you just have to adjust to it. So that's my life and I well I don't know if I'm actually supposed to say it but assuming that you guys are going to catch this on Monday and it's already going to be out by then by Hana live is happening this this week yeah this week it's happening on Thursday at two o'clock and it's very interesting how this came to be so my hana is currently taking a break from making content but we have been really talking discussing rebranding and everything there's a by hana logo colors everything everything it's really amazing it's really exciting and because of the whole pandemic my production company it's not a production company it's an ad agency i don't honestly i don't even know honestly what rgc and by tv are like i don't know what's the right description for them i think they're like a digital agency let's just call it that okay so we kind of all decided to take a break it was me alam who else is creating content right now i think it's just like me and alam but we've all kind of decided to take a break from creating like the really highly produced videos On my part, I don't know if I've actually talked about it, but I think I have lightly. But Baihana decided to take a break. I always get confused with stories that I tell because I either say it on a podcast or I say it on a video or like I say it somewhere. I've bust that one shot. But anyways, Baihana decided to take a break because it was so hard for me to produce. If I've never said it before, Um, being like creating content is hard in itself but then having to create pan- like having to create content under a pandemic is a lot harder especially when you are wearing the shoes of Baihana like when you're wearing the hat the Baihana hat because I don't just speak for myself I speak for a lot of women out there and so I have to be very conscious and very careful of the content that I put out and so I I, I was honestly also feeling myself like I was feeling some sort of way, especially with the pandemic. It's been hard on everyone. It was so it was so hard for me to create content. I think I've been having this problem because when I make a bunch of videos, I'll stop. Like I'll make videos for two weeks straight, and then I'll just stop, and I'll just stop for a month and be like, I don't want to see my camera. I don't want to sit down in the spot where I make videos. I kind of really have to distance myself from it because I get so. I don't know I think I just like I get so overwhelmed by it because it's so much work sitting in front of a camera creating your scripts and then like it 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 consumes you especially when you're not allowed to go outside like I just felt like this wasn't a home anymore it was a workplace and I had it was consuming me mentally physically emotionally spiritually so I was just like you know what I need to take a break and I kind of felt that way also when it came to photo shoots um It was the moment I started doing a bunch of photo shoots at home. I shifted from photo from videos to photo shoots. Every corner of my house instantly was a photo shoot area. And I think that I also got really tired of it because I have not put makeup on in the last like week. I have not like after my photo shoot 
with Let's Stylize. She sent me a bunch of amazing clothes. I made a bunch of TikToks about it. And I have photos that I haven't even uploaded yet. I was just done. And like... That was last week. That was this week. Uh, I haven't picked up a... I haven't done a photo shoot in like three... Like a week, I think. Yeah. I'm confused with the days. But uh, but the point is, I don't want to do photo shoots right now. Because I'm tired, honestly. Like, I feel like the moment I open my doors to like, Oh, hey, I'm doing collabs. Everybody wanted to do it. And I just got tired. Like, I got... I honestly, like, everything just felt like work. Because I think... I understand, like, I I don't even want to talk about it. I don't know. I don't, this is not supposed to be what the podcast is about. But um, here we are talking about it. Um, I think I just really had to say that because I, I'm getting a lot of messages and people aren't replying. But doing photo shoots are very, they're very exhausting. And I just, I just can't do it right now. I'm feeling a certain way, guys. I don't know. I think, like, it's just a, it's an emotional thing. <sighs> I'm a very emotional person. All right. But so I got a message. I think it was Sunday night and my creative director, PJ, who is amazing, by the way, messages me and says, Miss Isa, would you like to do by Hana live? And I was like, oh, my God, what is this? And I was very apprehensive to it just because I've been feeling so exhausted, like, when I'm not playing, I'm cleaning the house. I'm there's just no do- downtime in my life anymore, and I'm it's everything is being done in this house, and I feel like there's no escape, and I'm just like consumed with work, and like it's you know whatever. That's it. That's just it. I'm just going crazy, <laughs> and my God, guys, there's a guy outside our building, and I feel so bad for him because he's carrying like two really heavy shopping bags. And he had to stop at the middle of the road because he's so heavy and he's taking a break and he's massaging his arms. And I really just want to go down there and give him a hug because there's no cars and he has to walk back home. And he, oh my God, it's making me cry. <sighs> Anyways, so I got, so PJ messaged me and I was like, I really don't know if I want to do this or not because it's work and like I like uh whatever I was feeling really really um what is the term I was feeling really burnt out that's the term and then I was like you know what I'm open to discussion because I'm really first and foremost happy that my agency thought of me um despite the pandemic you know, to even be considered in a time like this is really amazing. I really super appreciated it. So I took the call on Monday or was, I don't know what day it was, but I took the call and they were like, Isa, do you want to do Vaihana Live? And I was like, what is it about? And they suggested something to me, which I really liked. And so on Thursday, it's going to be our first episode of by Hana live and you guys are gonna have to catch it because it's everything that i want the podcast to be except on a live audience which is something i cannot do on my own anymore so it's just amazing guys it really is amazing i'm so super duper happy and psyched about it so i hope that you guys catch it if i sound tired and un- un- enthusiastic, it's because i am so freaking tired i'm just gonna spend like an hour of me ranting but i so it's mother's day right and paulo's family decides to have a zoom call for all the mothers and everyone in the family especially our grandmother at 10 o'clock in the morning and i wake up at 11 11 30 and it's so hot in cebu lord help me and i'm just like i didn't sleep well last night because i thought i was watching rupaul's drag race all stars five apparently i was watching reruns of of all stars four and it took me like two episodes in to kind of realize that i'm such an idiot and then so i was really tired and it's really hot and then it's a sunday so i decided to clean which is what i do on sundays and, like, I swear to God, I love my dog, Cody, so much. But his hair is a bitch. Like, it's everywhere. There are ants and hair in every surface of this house. It's killing me. 
and Cody's hair is everywhere and it's so hot and I've been doing some spring cleaning and I'm really tired. I almost didn't record this podcast <laughs> and I've just spent like a good 15 minutes just like rambling on, which is pretty bad considering I have to edit this after. But yeah, maybe I won't edit this after. We'll see. So that's everything that I've been doing this week. I've just been playing COD. I have cleaned the house, cooked. I don't do the laundry and I'm just tired. And yeah, I, I'm even surprised that I thought of a podcast topic for today. But that's that's it. So today's topic, which I decided to create for everyone is why or not why how to find your niche when it comes to creating content and i decided to do this because i get asked this a lot how to find your niche which in concept doesn't sound hard but is also really freaking hard i think i created this podcast because a lot of people have started to create content like if you're a chef you are really itching to cook and like have an audience or there have been people who have been asking you to create vlogs and stuff like that and it's that's good for you because you have a niche but then after a while you're gonna realize damn there's like a million and one chefs how am i different you know the vlog that you made honestly there's probably already a vlog about it it was just easier for people to like badger you to do it and like give you a hobby and like pastime and stuff like that so it's still great but if you do consider like continuing on with this like you're still gonna need your own niche like something needs to stand out and i get asked this a lot how do you find your niche and i get it i understand why you're asking in my situation i kind of want to do this podcast like in like a kind of story time setting and you're going to hear a lot of clicking because I, my foot cannot stop playing with the door of my cabinet. So you're just going to have to deal with it. I love you. But, um, all right. So it was very hard for me to find my niche. And if you are a content creator that I've worked with, you probably had some words about it. Like, oh, I just picked up a topic and then ran with it. And there's a part of me that, agrees with it and cannot be offended by it but there's also like a really deeper meaning towards it so this is just going to be a story time of how i found my niche and like things that you can pick up from it so it was particularly hard for me to find my niche when it came to creating content because the only thing i knew was just creating content whether it was like a blog or it was a podcast or it was fashion and stuff like that so I don't like to go back back a little bit. I started podcasting. No, no, no. I started creating content, which is blogging when I was 15. Yeah, Um, I think I was like a first year high school student. I forget. 15 years old. Yeah. Second year high school. No, it can't be second year. I think it was definitely grade six. It was, I started blogging in the sixth grade and it was just like, I say this a lot. It was a way for me to get rid of my mom. See, me and my mom have obviously had like this strained relationship ever since the beginning, but my mom would go through my, my diaries and I was just like, I ain't having it right now, bitch. What's the one thing you have? I don't that like I have that you don't have. And it was a computer, which she bought. Thank you, by the way. (laughs) Um, So I, I figured like there has to be an online diary somewhere. And at the time it was Zanga. And so I knew how to write. That was the one thing that I was so passionate about. And so I started making blogs and then I went, got into college. I hated nursing and I was like, you know what? I need to, I was in my third year or my fourth, I was in my third year of college and I am like a really weird, paranoid person person i was thinking of what my life would be like 10 years from now (laughs) 10 10 years is almost there but i was in my third year of college i was looking at my life i was in miserable nursing school i was depressed as fuck 
I was smoking, I was drinking, I was hooking up with boys. Like, it was crazy. It was honestly crazy. And it was because the deep rooted issue of that was I was being so, so self destructive because I was so unhappy with my life. And I was looking at that and I was like, oh no, I need to do something. I need to take control of my life. What is this thing that's bothering me so much? And I was so self destructive because I thought that I had to be a nurse. After graduating college, I was like, it's my moral responsibility as the first generation in three gens to go to college and finish to give justice to the course that I have taken, not voluntarily, but that I have chosen to take, to not take, that I've agreed to take. Yeah. So, yeah, my mom chose my nursing course for me and I just I kind of felt at the time uh, I had no other option but to be a nurse because I was just showing disrespect if I didn't become a nurse if I didn't work as a nurse and honestly up until now I still get that flack I still feel it like people think I'm so ungrateful and I'm a stupid motherfucking bitch because I never worked as a nurse but I'm that stupid motherfucking bitch who is so fucking happy guys you're gonna hate me because all I do is bitch and curse and drink but that's just who i am and i'm happy (laughs) but um so i kind of took the one thing that i knew at the time which was fashion because i loved fashion i grew up in a family who worked in fashion we were suppliers and manufacturers for a lot of brands we manufactured clothes for island souvenirs um, USA Sports, but we say special, Walde. We did all of that. My mom's sister married into the family that owns those businesses, and therefore we were the lucky people who got to make their clothes for them. We were their subcontractors, and then we split from there and then created our own stuff, which was not really to sell. We were suppliers, basically, yeah. So I was so in love with fashion, and I always wanted to take fashion designing and so i said you know what this is where i'm gonna thrive i'm gonna be a fashion blogger at the time there was like websites that allowed you to blog and stuff like that like post your photos chris oi was such a big deal as she always has been and is and i just thought i'm gonna be a fashion blogger and then i woke up to the rude awakening that i am actually not that fashionable (laughs) like I kind of like I did that gig for years and I still do it. I still talk about fashion, but I am starting to realize that my fashion sense is I don't have like this one look. I like I, I'm girly. No, that's not a nice thing to say. Um because girly doesn't make a girl, you know. I can be girly and wear t-shirts too. Right. Um Let's try to let's try to visual. Let me try and create this visual for you. I am Isa, and I am everything that I am. I am kind of like I'm like a I'm sporty. I act in basically, guys. What I'm trying to say is like a, I'm a tomboy. That's it. I don't know if that's like general. If that's like politically correct to say it, but and I like shirts and I like to dress up and I'm realizing that I like to wear bras more than I like to wear shirts now. Like I like wearing sports bras out and it may or may not be fashionable to a lot of people. But at the time when I started blogging, I kind of was pushing the narrative of me being like this very delicate woman who liked laces and soft clothes and things that I actually did not like. So spring cleaning was such an eye-opener that i had a lot of shit that i did not like (laughs) and that i really i i hid my t-shirts for like a year guys because i told myself you have to stop wearing t-shirts isa it's not what a wife would wear it's not what a girly girl would wear and you are a girl because you got married and like i realized how stupid that was and i took out the shirts and now i'm just wearing a cotton t-shirt that has like the golden state warriors on it and i freaking love it And I think that was the start of how I really, really found my niche because I would being a fashion blogger, it's it's fun because as someone like me who loves to experiment with fashion, I was okay with it. Like, you know, I would I do it again? Would I wear would I spend money now that money is 
hard <laughs> would i spend money on clothes that i don't like probably not i think i'm gonna it makes shopping easier for me but am i open to trying different things yes definitely um but it kind of made me feel because all the fashion bloggers that i was surrounded by were wearing like they were like you know like the neutrals the pastels they're very for the lack of a better term they were very feminine and i didn't really identify with that and so i honestly felt for a very long time that i wasn't going to succeed because i didn't have the criteria that like all these amazing fashion bloggers that i knew had not knowing that there was actually now especially that there is a world uh, an amazing world of women out there who just dress the way they they want to whether it's androgynous it's very delicate it's very mod it's very vintage there's just so many things that i wish i knew i just felt that i had to fit in with my other friends and i realize now that i i wish that i could have gone back in time and not done that i wish i just had stayed true to my t-shirts and shorts and maybe not be a fashion blogger but you know you learn you learn and i struggled with that thought a lot that i had to be a certain kind of person to succeed in my industry if i wanted to be a good fashion blogger i had to dress this way and dressing a certain way meant that you had a certain personality if you were dressing very delicate that must mean that you're also a very delicate feminine woman when the reality is i was wearing these clothes but i was still like uh, like the girl that i i don't know why i'm laughing at that but i'm also i like i was a very bugai girl and if you ask anyone who's met me they will definitely say the first thing people will say is isa is not they will not say oh my god isa i know her she's so nice if they say i'm nice they're lying okay because nice is not the first thing you're gonna say about me the first thing you're gonna say about me is i sipat kena si isa ay bugoy kena si isa ay si isa wala ay batas awan ay buot bayhan na pala hubog kena it's like it's not it's not nice but i like it when people call me nice because i still think i'm nice yeah and so um it was i was at this point where i was so also frustrated with my life and everything that i had built for myself at the time because i, I kind of felt and i don't know if a lot of women will agree with this but i kind of felt like there were certain things that i had to be or do because of the things that i had chosen in my life i was at the time a business owner and i felt that i had to act a certain way because i was a business owner i was someone's fiance and i felt like i had to act a certain way because i was a fiance when i got married i felt like i had to act a certain way because i got married and the fact that i really succumbed to these things honestly now pisses me the fuck off but i promised myself that i would never do that again and so it was that's how i found my niche because there were so many things in my life that i was so frustrated in and i knew that i was smart enough or at least not if not smart vocal enough i could find the words to express my frustration and it was when i started and you can see that i have dipped my toes in it a little bit because i create i did create content where i was giving advice and that was where i was able to just talk and give my opinions it was called serious sundays i did that for a while the whole fact that i did a podcast was me trying to break the stigma that i was this and i was that i was trying to really tell people hey i'm a badass bitch with a voice listen to me i did uh i think i did an adulthood video where i was just like the things i hate about christmas and that was me just kind of bitching about things but also trying to really break through of like this this vision that i had for that i felt like people had of me and then just a side note just a side story so i got asked a couple of times a bunch of times actually to talk about fashion like to give fashion talks and i would give these talks and i would be so mad at myself because like 
I just like the last person you want to ask for help about this shit is me. But then they would still get me and I couldn't say no because, you know, I still had to pay my bills and the, the money was good. But I promise, like, I actually like I kind of figured now that I have the right approach when it comes to talk to giving fashion talks. I'm straying off topic. Let me get back to my point. So I think the the pivotal point of my creating fashion uh creating content and how i found my niche was that perpetual feeling of i can do so much more than this i had chosen content because it was the thing that i had known and had been doing for the rest for my in like a bulk of my life i would blog everything i loved being in front of the camera i always wanted to be an actress or a celebrity or uh an what do you call this a public figure i always wanted people to know who i was and to remember me as selfish as it sounds i cannot deny the fact that that's just how i have always been i am i crave attention guys i'm ksp (laughs) but i kind of like i that was my chosen career choice it didn't just fall on my lap i chose it because I knew that I had a voice and I had thoughts and I really wanted people to hear me. And it was, and I share this story a lot, but I don't go into detail, but it was a night out with my friends. I was so close to like, not just not doing content anymore. I was making good money because I was running the family business. I gave myself two years to run it. And then I was like, yeah, you'll do this for two years and it's going to get big because you don't give up. And then you're just going to give up content because I don't think it's for you anymore. Like, you just don't know what the hell you're doing. You're wasting your time. And then I went out drinking with my friends. And I don't know where Paolo was. I think Paolo was in Manila. But so we were already engaged at this time. And I went, oh, it was what? I Okay, wait. I remember this. It was. June because I went on a I went to a bridal fair with my best friend Elisa and we checked out like well we pretended to look at wedding stuff but the real reason was we wanted to get out and she's a lesbian so she wanted to look at hot girls and we went out drinking and then um our doctor friend who's also a barcada Irene she caught up and we had a really fun time getting crunk and then so she's a doctor and then she goes, oh my God, you know what? I'm so annoyed because um, I was working in the community. If you don't, guys, don't, like to paint a picture, like community health centers. So she got, she was saying she got assigned at like an, um, basically like a squatters area. But the patients who were women were on their iPhones and they had like, they were on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. But they were asking her, like, all these insane questions, which to her were like, honestly, if you just took the time to check your phone and do the research, you would find that stuff. And she's like, and then we went on to talk about just, like, stuff that we would see online, like, scandals and, like, stupid videos. Because at at the time, there were, like, a lot, a lot of, like, stupid videos, like, just people, like, screwing their chickens or like people getting drunk or it was just like really like trash on facebook and so i had a drunken idea where i would create content about women because it was right up my alley i was feeling so many frustrations in my life and it wasn't just in that that point like growing up I felt frustrated because people thought or people would say that I was never going to cut it like in life. They would say I wasn't as pretty as my cousin who was white. I wasn't as like I was short and dark. And so I should give up tennis. The one thing that I loved so much in my life and swimming because I was too dark. I would have boys say that because I was dark. My best friend who was very white. Like, I got compared to her a lot to the point where I had severe insecurities. And there are just so many things that it brought me back to. 
and I had that eureka moment and that was a eureka moment that I had been waiting for for a while and I don't know honestly why it didn't click with me sooner just because it was something that I felt the world wasn't quite ready for I wasn't ready for them to hear me bitch because they would be like who the fuck is this bitch but I realized now that I should have done it sooner but it was that moment where I was like oh my god this is what I'm going to talk about from now on. I am going to use my voice and fight for the women who are constantly being m- muted out in society. I'm going to talk for the women who are so beautiful, who don't get that. And it was a, an awakening for me, guys, because I'll be honest. When I say I'm not that nice, I don't. I mean it like I'm a bitch like I can be a bitch and I've said some really bitchy things in the past if I've ever said anything mean to you I'm really sorry and I'm learning from it and I constantly fear that like oh my god there's like some someone's gonna come out and share that story of me being a bitch to her and you know what I'll take it if it ever comes out I can't remember but I know for sure that I've said some really mean shit in the past and I'm it's Ever since I decided to do by Hana, I took that I took that thought and I learned and I grew from it. I brought it to by TV and said, "Hey guys, um they wanted to give me a show and I said I didn't want it. Take by Hana. I love it." And so we did and um I was able uh, I I tried it out with Ibilat actually first and then I did two episodes of it, thought it was amazing, was also frustrated because I was trying to mimic Alam Garcia and Malaya's style. Um, I did the whole vertical angle. I did the whole three minutes because I wanted pe- women to hear it and learn from it. I just really tried it out and then I was feeling frustrated. And so I took my frustrations and gave it to Bai TV and then they took my frustrations and helped me with it. And so ever since then, Obviously, I couldn't do it right away because I had to get married. And then I was also like, it was so many things in between. So it kind of took like a year before that actually launched. But it was since that journey, it's opened my eyes so much because I'm learning so many things about what it is to be a woman and not just a woman, but a person. A lot of things like when I say it's not cool for you to say, I'm not like other girls. I'm learning why that's not true or why it's not good to say that. I am I feel like I'm opening up my mind so much more not because it's up my alley but because it's eventually going to make me a better person. It's going to make me more open-minded when I'm a mother. I have loopy ass family members and it's opening up my eyes to becoming more considerate to the fact that they're like that i honestly think people in my very close circle are insane in the membrane but i'm understanding why they're like that and it's making me a more considerate friend person and in general and a person a gen like in general overall i don't know why i'm stuttering i'm thinking about spaghetti honestly as i'm saying this because i want to make spaghetti but i'm so grateful because i had that and i'm sure a lot of you content creators are out there thinking i want that moment i want what she had i want to create content that i can actually create for a very long time i want to find my niche now let me tell you it's not gonna happen overnight I think that the best content creators right now are those who did not spend majority of their time creating content. What I mean by this is my niece, Nicole Borromeo, she's Miss Millennial. She wants to create a channel, obviously. And she would actually be, be really great for creating content because she is a beauty queen. She spent so many 
years outside of the internet working on her craft modeling motivational speaking or just learning how to answer questions in itself um walking joining pageants and so she's experienced so many things outside of the internet that she can now bring into the internet and create content about so there's like a million and one topics that she could actually talk about as for me it was harder for me because I just knew to create content and I just couldn't figure it out. But it was me being outside of the internet, hanging out with real people that I found it. It was my real life experience that I found it. Charmaine DeLeon, I love her. She is a bomb ass bitch, as we all are. But I love her a lot. And she's a businesswoman and she's spent so many years creating businesses, learning about a business and making the mistakes, learning how to fix them. And now she's 25 years old, knows a lot about business, finance, and can now create content online, which is so amazing because she didn't spend so much time thinking, oh my God, I want to make content. What will I make? And I think that's what's really important. I Like when you just want to say, oh, I want to be a vlogger. Sure, you can try it. Let's we'll see how that goes start making your daily vlogs and stuff like that but i kind of see why it's more important now for there to be substance in your vlogs which is why i really love it when people who have lived outside of the internet come into the internet space and create relevant content that people can actually relate to you know um like Will, he didn't say, I want to be a travel vlogger. I mean, Will Dasovich, I don't know his story, but I'm just assuming. Like, he didn't say, I want to be a tra- travel vlogger. Let's start blah, blah, blah. No, he started traveling first, and then he became a travel vlogger. The same as Elodia. She's been costling, been known for it for years, and then she created. This list can go on and on and on, which is what I'm trying to say. But when you just say, I want to be a vlogger, okay, let's um do a challenge. Like, I'll tell you honestly, and I don't mean to burst your bubble, but that is going to go down really fast and you're just going to get your heart broken. So I would really suggest thinking of your niche. You know, if it's a prank channel, make sure you love doing pranks. Don't just do pranks because you think that's what's going to hit. It's a lot of self-discovery and a lot of trying to understand yourself, trying to find things that you're actually comfortable with talking about. It's a lot of asking yourself when you find out what you like it's also asking yourself is this sustainable how long am i going to be able to do this can i do this when i'm a little bit older or am i still going to feel the same way when i'm like 20 years older you know it's a lot and the reason why i felt like it was so okay for me to do by hannah because there are always going to be issues about women and i will always fight for them and i'm always gonna be annoyed by them um my sister's asking um about stuff hold on let me reply hold on recording my sister's been talking to me a lot recently which is good because i also did not talk to her for a while and i also didn't talk to my brother for a while and i honestly think that our relationship is a little bit strained right now kind of keeps me up at night but also we have to heal on our own I say that like I know what I'm talking about. No, I only know how to make content. Just kidding. But um, Mona Shah, um, I think it's important when you're trying to find your niche to really ask yourself. And I think a lot of people don't say this. They just say, ask yourself, what are you good at? What is something you love? And then create content about that. Yes, that's true. But also think of something that like people would also want to hear. How can your the con like if if you're creating a a vlog to entertain people or to inform people you also really have to consider if i made this are people is it going to be beneficial to others it doesn't have to be like a bajillion people if it's beneficial to at least one or two people then yeah i also don't really like it when content creators who just created a blog or a vlog that we don't even know about start their first video with an about me or who am i or 10 things i don't know the first thing about you i don't know why i should be watching you so maybe don't make uh 10 things you don't need to know that you didn't know about me because i'm not gonna see a random photo on my 
on my suggested page go Ooh, who is this i want to know 10 things that no i would like okay it's like this i fell in love with trixie mattel in the span of two days i have been watching everything about her so trixie mattel is a drag sh- is a drag queen who was on rupaul's drag race i've always known her for her crazy ass makeup and i always thought why is her makeup like that i've always wondered because it was so different but i just never bothered to like search her up and stuff like that but she came out on my suggested feed and she was sharing her barbie collection it was so amazing and i started watching her and it dawned on me so that's why her name is trixie mattel because the makers of is it in trixie mattel yeah the makers of barbie is mattel i don't know trixie but i know mattel makes it or am I getting it twisted? Whatever. But then I was like, oh my god, I must know everything about her. And like, she doesn't have that video yet. And it's keeping me on my toes. So in the meantime, I'm indulging in every single video. I know who her mom is. I know who Juju is now. I know who or Juno, Gino, something. Yeah, it's also an amazing drag queen. I am learning so much about Barbies. And I'm just like, I'm just really observing everything about Trixie Mattel the drag queen and that's what I'm trying to say to you guys ask yourself how did you fall in love with a content creator and then replicate that if you are serious about creating content if it's a diary this is something I don't get which is I also am like I I feel the struggle I recently have been doing some spring cleaning on my vlog channel as well so if you notice the f- you're if you're on YouTube, you're catching this on a Bahana page, which is recently known as Ease of These. Now, Ease of These is now my personal channel, and Bahana I will always always promote 100 percent because number one, that's where I make my money. Number two, it's monetized. Three, number one should be because Bahana is there. So Bahana is there. Number two, <laughs> it's monetized. Number three, that's where I make my money. Um. So I have decided to like make everything on by Hana, educational, informational, entertaining. Entertainment entertainment is the last bit of it. I hope you guys think I'm funny or that you're entertained. But at the end of the day, I want you guys to be informed and educated. So I promote the shit out of by Hana. But on Aesop Thieves, which is my personal channel, which I just launched, I don't I really don't promote it as much. And there's a reason to that. And because I like I'll promote it here and there, but I don't push it as hard as by Hannah because Isa, please, is honestly a personal vlog channel. Like if I have anything special to me, then I'll post it there with my own strategic. I try to be smart with like the the um, with my titles and stuff like that. With I try to apply the same rules also because like if I can make that my source of income, too, that would be great because the bitch is broke. But what's the point of me knowing all these SEO graphics titling shit if I don't use it to my advantage, right? So I'm going to do it and don't hate me for it. But like for the most part, Ease is really just a personal channel. It's where I share my streamings, my games. It's where if me and Paolo are ever going to do anything fun again and if he agrees to be on a channel or on a video, that's where I'm going to post it. But for the most part, it's just fun. And so I don't really... view of it is it's a personal channel it's for memories it's a keepsake channel so i don't really mind if people really watch it or not if they like me enough if they watch the Bahana videos and they want to know more about me then they'll go on my personal podcast or no my personal vlog and that's just how i imagine people falling in love with me and eventually that's not so conceited but i said it and i'm not gonna edit it out but that's just how i imagined a user or an audience member or someone who's watching discover my by hannah and then go who is this chick and then they'll eventually go on my personal channel and then just love the shit that i put there and if they don't then they can be like i don't really like her personal channel channel because i'm not really interested in her but i like her content so i'm gonna stay in this space and that's okay and that's just the reality and i don't know when i started doing this podcast so i could be i could have been going on for like a really long time it's already six oh no it's already five so i should be uploading this in a bit um 
I don't know if I just wasted an hour of your life, but I hope it kept you entertained and I hope you learned from it. I really, really want, I know that I don't usually do shout outs on the vlog, but I really, really want to say thank you and hello to DJ. Her name is Deanne Jean. Dean, I, I really don't know how to pronounce it yet. She is from Iloilo and she is amazing, guys. Honestly, she supports me so much. It's insane. And the level of love that she has given me and Paolo, especially on the streams, is amazing. And I'm so grateful for you, DJ. I hope you're feeling great. And I hope that this also kind of entertained you in a way. Educational, I don't know, but entertainment. I hope so. You are so amazing and I hope you're doing well and I can't wait to see you. I know you've been exercising and I think she actually challenged me once to an exercise challenge and I didn't do it because I'm not in the mood to exercise. But please share easy workouts with me because I really need to start exercising again. You are awesome. If you guys want to follow her, I'll put it in the description show notes below. And yeah, I'm going to cook my family's secret recipe of spaghetti which honestly you kind of realize every single family has their own pasta recipe but i like ours i hope you guys have an amazing sunday and if uh well i get asked this a lot for the for the time being that i don't really want to record with anyone i am definitely gonna turn this podcast into like like content stuff um like how to create better content it's just gonna be like very informational educational and a bit of my ranting because that's never gonna go away really and if you guys have questions feel free to ask like just send me a message i get asked like how do you improve your self-confidence a lot and the short long answer of it is i really just stop caring what people think about me but that also didn't happen overnight but i would definitely love to talk about that there's just a lot of things that I'd really like to talk about. And um, for the most part, I'm really happy that I am able to record this podcast alone because it's really it's been really hard for me to talk to other people. It's I've just been feeling a certain way, which is why I've been like drowning myself in streams. So if you guys want to catch me play and vent out all my frustrations to the world, make sure that you're catching Issa Please on Facebook. I do all my streaming there. I put all my content on Issa Please, but you can also follow me on my YouTube and help a girl out because she broke. Um, I am Issa Please on social media and on my YouTube. I'm Issa Please and by Hannah. So I'll catch you guys. It's all in the description, so just look down, guys. Catch you guys in the next episode. Bye.